Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Option Gig and in this session I want to talk about volatility products and what you as a retail investor should be aware of or beware of. Because of the recent health crisis, uh, I have seen a lot more interest in the retail investors about volatility products. In the recent times, volatility jumped higher and products like UVXY, TVIX jumped you know, 100%, in some cases 1000%. And now I see a lot of retail investors asking questions, hey, can I buy this product? So if you have a questions around volatility product, stay tuned, go through this session, and that will definitely help you in making the right decision on what volatility products you should touch and what are those that you should run away from. So don't go anywhere. Just stay right here and we will get into everything about volatility products right after the introductory music. Hello everyone. Welcome to Option Geek. This is your host Vivek, part-time option trader and full-time worker husband and father. If you also want to generate consistent monthly income trading options while working in your regular day job, then join me in this journey. All right, welcome back. So let's dive into volatility products. Before I go into the description of the products, let's take a step back and understand what is volatility? Now, volatility in stock market or volatility of the stock, it expresses the degree of movement of stock, the magnitude, the amount the stock that can amount that the stock can move. It does not tell us the direction that the stock may move, but the volatility will tell us how much the stock could possibly move. If a stock is expected to move a lot, that, that stock is known to be more volatile. If a stock prices remain relatively stable, then it is considered to be a low volatile stock. For example, let's take a stock A is at $50 at the start of a month and is at $50 at the end of the month. But between the month, it has gone all places right from all the way up to $70 and all the way down to $30 and in between. Now stock B starts at $50 ends the month at $50 and during the course of this month it has stayed between $60 and $40. Now in when we are comparing these two stocks, stock A is considered to be more volatile than stock B because it has moved way more than stock B in either direction. So that's exactly what volatility tells us about stock. Now if we can look at historical prices of the stock and find out where it has been, we can actually find out what's the volatility of the stock could be. Now when it comes to the options world, Looking at the option pricing, we can also find out what market makers or the market is expecting the stock movements in future. Again, not the stock direction, but just the magnitude of the movement in future. And that is what is termed as implied volatility of the stock. Means how much 
is the stock implied or expected to move in one year period from today. Now, if we have to get a little more geeky and understand the exact uh, definition, hear me out. Implied volatility is expressed as a percentage of the stock price indicating a one standard deviation move over the course of a year. Let's dissect this mumbo jumbo. I threw in a word standard deviation. So now if you are thinking why did you miss your stat class? Or why did you go to movie instead of attending the stat class in which standard deviation was taught? Maybe it's a time to brush up those concepts. It's not hard. It'll just take a few minutes to understand what a standard deviation is. Let's take an example. So an IV implied volatility of 25% on a $200 stock means that one standard deviation movement over one year for that stock is expected to be 25% of 200 i.e. $50. That means there is a 68% probability to be exact, one standard deviation is 68.2%. So there is 68.2% probability that the stock will be between $150 and $250 by the end of one year. The implied volatility was 25%. Stock today is trading at $200, 25% of $200 is 50. Implied volatility tells us one standard deviation movement means 68.2% probability that stock will trade between $50 lower than today's price and $50 higher than today's price. That's all implied volatility is. So if then implied volatility is higher, say if it was 50%, it means the stock could trade from now until one year, at the end of one year, stock could be anywhere between $100 and $300. That means it's highly volatile. So IV of 50% tells me that stock is more volatile than with another stock whose IV is 25%. That's all IV is. That's all volatility tells us. Now the bigger question is, if this is volatility, why are we talking about trading in volatility products? Is volatility an asset class? Like some of the asset class that you're already aware of, and the common ones are stocks, bonds, some not that common among the retail investors are pieces of art, a Van Gogh painting. It could be an asset class. Saudi Arabia has been accumulating a lot of those art pieces and they're not using it to display in their museums. We don't know what they're doing with it, but it's got an art value. Precious metal, we all are aware of, either in the form of hard, precious metal means a gold coin or a GLD, an ETF. And one very common asset class is real estate. Piece of land, piece, your own home. These are very common asset classes. Now some of the uncommon asset classes are volatility products. Foreign exchange, forex. Futures, options, and the newest baby on the block, crypto assets. Again, 
people and investors can invest in all these assets and when investors want to invest there will be products created for them so volatility is also an asset class as an investor or a trader i want to take a position saying the volatility of the stock will increase or decrease or volatility of the overall market could increase or decrease depending on what's happening around the world and i want to take a position on it i want to bet on it i want to make an intelligent guess on it and if i want to do it there are firms that will create products for me to express that opinion and we do have many products those are called volatility products let's go through them first volatility product that i want to talk about is vix v i x that's the most common one that's the base volatility product and all other products are derived out of vix now vix tells us what's the implied volatility of spx index for the next 30 days and for those who are not familiar with spx spx index is the index that tracks top 500 market cap companies in united states uh, of america the etf based on spx is spy so vix essentially tracks the volatility of us market now vix is also a product on which there are options available and you can buy and sell the options on vix now where there is a product there are also futures so we have a futures on vix with sl- forward slash vx now forward slash vx is vix futures and that predicts where vix itself will be in the future and if you are familiar with futures if you trade in futures then you know this is a very tradable asset it trades on exchanges you can buy and sell slash vx futures next product i want to talk about is vxx now vxx is an exchange traded note it's an etn and that tracks vix short term futures you know only first two months of futures not beyond that it only tracks what the vix futures are by end of current month and the next month futures and another product vxz that's a cousin of vxx it's an etn exchange traded note that tracks vix mid term futures means 5 months out while vxx is a short term future it tracks short term future index only 2 months vxz tracks mid term future index all the way up to 5 months and there are many products but i don't think i have a time to go through all so i picked up some of the volatility products now all these products vix slash vx vxx vxz as you have seen all of them are based and derived from <clears throat> vix there are more products i want to talk about those are leveraged products there are people who want to uh take huge bets and want a windfall gain if they are right welcome leverage now if you are familiar with leverage products you would understand that leverage means if you invest one 
And if you're right, you could meet twice or three times. Now, why should volatility products be any different? People want to take huge bets and there are issuers who are ready to supply with what they need. They're ready to provide you with the dope if you're looking to get high. So let's talk about some of those dope, volatility dopes. UVXY. UVXY is a leveraged ETF and it tracks one and a half times of VXX. VXX itself, as we just saw, tracks the short term future index for VIX and UVXY is now one and a half times of VXX. Next product, TVIX, TVIX. It is leverage ETN and it tracks two times of VXX. So now, if you are really, 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 really sure that VXX is gonna blow tomorrow and I want to bet Twice, I'm going to make twice if I'm right. I'm going to buy a TVIX. But what if you want to take a inverse bet? I want to take the dark side. We have products for you. SVXY. SVXY is an inverse ETN. And that tracks negative one half negative half of VXX. So if VXX moves up by 1%, SVXY will move down by half a percent. It is negative 0.5 times of VXX. One thing important that we should note is all these leveraged products, UVXY, TVIX, SVXY, they all track based on daily movements. So every day, these products will check what happened to VXX and change its own prices based on that. So if VXX went up by 5, 10%, in a day, UVXY will go up by 15%. TVIX will go up by 20%. And SVXY will go down by 5%. And this change they will do daily. It's a daily tracking mechanism. Okay, so these are the most common volatility products that retail investors hear either on some uh, you know videos or reading some blogs and then they say have a lot of questions should i buy uvxy should i short tvx what can we do about this so let's continue our discussion and i will have answers for you but before we dig into the answers, let's first understand how volatility itself behaves in the long term. And I'm gonna throw two terms that might be a tongue twister for now, but stay with me and I'll, hopefully I'll be able to clarify on what those terms mean. First term I wanna throw about around is contango. Now volatility is most of the time stays in contango mode. Contango means volatility in future is more expensive, is higher than volatility in near term. For example, volatility, let's say VIX by end of this month and the VIX by the end of four months later the four month later VIX will have higher value than the VIX 
by end of current month. The reason is we don't know what can happen in four months. There's a lot more things that can go right or wrong. There are a lot more possibilities on what can happen in stock market. So a lot more uncertainty. As you increase the duration on which you want to view VIX, you're increasing the possibility of many more things going wrong. There is a lot more uncertainty because the duration is longer. And that is the general behavior of VIX. The longer dated VIX, the future dated VIX is always higher than the shorter duration VIX. Now, of course, there are some exceptions. And those exceptions are called backwardation. So most of the time, VIX or volatility stays in contango mode means the future dated VIX is more expensive, has got a higher value than a near dated VIX. But in some cases, it can turn backwards. And that's what term is called backwardation. VIX can get into backwardation in which the future dated VIX is lower than the current dated VIX. Or I would say the current month or the shorter month VIX value is higher, becomes higher than the future dated VIX. Now you would ask me, why would it ever be? There's a more time in future. A lot more things can go wrong. So why would a current month short term VIX be higher than a future dated VIX? We don't have to go far behind to get an example. Let's dial our clock back by two months. What happened in March 23rd? In mid of March to last week, you know, the end of March, the VIX was through the roof. And at that time, we as a market participants, we knew this is the worst time. In future times could be better. Nothing worse can happen than what has happened in March. So if you really look at, go back and study the old data, the VIX futures for end of March were way, way, way higher than the VIX futures trading in October, September. Because we participants are thinking, today the situation is so bad, I think we will find a cure. We will figure out how to get around with this health crisis. Economy will open up. Things will get better in future. Right now, it is the worst situation. So during that time, VIX was in backwardation board. So there are a few cases like these in terms of crisis, in the middle of crisis, when VIX could be trading in backwardation mode. But most of the time, in the normal scenarios, scenario that has been, we have been seeing since 2010 all the way until 2020 before this pandemic hit, VIX has been mostly in contango. Okay. All right, so now you are clear about contango and backwardation, what that means. Now let's turn back on to our volatility discussion. Now, because the VIX trades in contango, it will impact how VXX value changes. Okay, we'll get into that. That was the reason why I had to introduce this contango and backwardation terms. All right, so if you are a retail investor slash trader, what are the products that you can pick up and try your luck? If you are a retail trader, I would say in that case, 
only two products that you should touch VIX and VXX you could trade directly in VIX options if you are thinking that markets could, could go down in future and I want to take a bet on it you may go ahead and buy some VIX options four months three months four months five months down the line go ahead and buy those VIX options that's one product that as a retail investors you could trade in yeah but if markets continue to stay steady and you don't get a, a bump in a volatility your options may just expire worthless but that's okay it means market didn't go down maybe you made money on your rest of the portfolio so you could use VIX as a hedge for rest of our portfolio there are a lot of other hedging techniques VIX could be one of it to offset some losses in case market drops your long holdings go down the VIX will go higher if you have VIX call options maybe you can recover some of that money so that is one product in which you can trade the other product that you could trade is VXX and again VXX you, when you're trading in VXX make sure you only trade for, for a short duration maybe a few weeks maybe a month or maximum two months you cannot buy VXX for longer duration. You cannot inventory VIX. Why? Because of a built-in drag in VXX based on how it is structured. And this is no conspiracy. VXS prospectors will mention it exactly how its term structure is unfortunately most of the retail traders don't bother to look deeper into how the term structure of VXX is and then they buy a VXX and then they see it you know VXS going down and down and wonder oh my god I'm losing money I mean if we have been trading stocks our mind is conditioned to think if it is you know 80% lower from last 52 weeks high oh, it could go back up it may be a deal that's how we're conditioned to think as a stock investor vxx term structure is different as i explained earlier vxx only tracks the first two months of volatility futures that means vxx always have to keep buying VIX futures for next two months <clears throat> and I have explained that volatility mostly stays in contango means the near month the current month VIX is lower and the future month VIX is more expensive so if VXX because of the way it is structured to track future volatility always have to buy the future dated VIX they have to continuously buy more expensive VIX every month so once this uh, v the current VIX futures come near to expiration they will have to s close th those positions and buy the future dated VIX and what happens if you keep doing this over and over again say if you look into your portfolio and if we keep buying uh, the stocks at a higher and higher cost and keep selling it at lower and lower price what happens to your portfolio it keeps going down if you buy things at a higher cost and sell it at a lower price there is inherent drag and if you mention to someone that your portfolio will do this this is how your term structure of your portfolio is and if I know it what you're doing it I'm not going to buy any units of your portfolio because I understand that there is inherent drag built in 
on what you have planning to do with your portfolio. VXX clearly says that its, its structure is that they will continuously track the first two future months of VIX futures. So they will continuously have to buy the future ones. They have to roll always to the next future uh, VIX. Means they always keep on buying the expensive VIX, which then continues to go down as near expiration. And then they buy another nearest, you know, two future months, which again goes down. So VIX has got an inherent downward drag built in it because of how it is structured. And this is no secret. Professionals know it. Just that as a retail investor, we really don't know it. And when we hear some professionals saying that they are buying VXX, they understand that there's an inherent drag built in it and then they build their strategies accordingly. They don't want to inventory it and buy it for next six months. They may they are probably buying it just to take a bet for next couple of weeks, which is okay. The drag doesn't show up itself, you know, in next two weeks that much. But if you as a retail investor only read through the line that there's somebody has bought VXX and you go and buy VXX uh, calls or just you buy VXX and hold it for six months. Ah, eh, bad luck. Don't blame the, the headless that you read. Understand the structure. And because of this inherent drag, VXX continuously have to reverse split itself so that it does not end up in pennies. Today, VXX is trading at, I don't know, maybe $30 or something. But if there was no reverse split done, its real value would be less than half of a penny. It started, VXS started in 2009 with a price of approximately $105. And it has gone through almost six or seven reverse splits. In 2017, its price, if you do not consider, you know, adjusting for reverse split was less than a penny. Wow. And you think you can buy VXX and wait for it to explode and make money over longer period? Think again. A $105 stock is now less than half a penny. And it's not that someone is conspiring to keep it down. It clearly states what its term structure is, what it's supposed to do, and that's exactly what it is doing. We just need to understand its term structure. Okay, so yeah, if you want to trade VXX, maybe trade it only for a short duration. Don't inventory it. Now let's talk about other uh, volatility products. And if you're a professional, or if you have a lot more time to babysit your trades and watch it really closely, then maybe you can also trade other products like UVXY, TVIX, SVXY. If you recall, all these are leveraged products. Just a reminder, UVXY is 1.5 times VXX. TVIX is 2 times VXX. And SVXY is negative, inverse, half times VXX. All these are leveraged products. So if you really want to use it, use it for ultra short duration, means a few days, or maybe just for a day. Just don't inventory it even for, you know, full week. Just doesn't work. Leverage, because it is leveraged product, it has got an inherent drag built in because of leverage. 
because they do a daily tracking mechanism. Don't believe me? Maybe we look at some numbers now. Let's assume the VXX is at $100 and TVIX starts its position with $200. That's on day zero when these products are launched. Now, after one day, that is day one, VXX is down 10%. That means TVX, which is tracking the daily change percent in VXX, and twice of it will be down 20%. Means at the end of a day, VXX value will be $90. It was $100, down 10%, means down $10. $90 is the new value of VXX. TVX, when it started, was $200. It was down 20%, means it is down $40. So the new value of TVIX is $160. Day two, say VXX is back up. It's up 11%. TVX will follow VXX but just twice so it will be up 22% so now you'll be thinking wow 20% down 22% up I am making money let's see at the end at the end of day two the math tells us that 11% up means $90 stock 11% up is $9.99 up so VXX at the end of day two will be $99.9. Almost close to where it was trading, where it started. TVX will be up 22%. But the base is $160. So it will be up $35.20. It means at the end of a day two, TVX will be trading at $195.20. Even though VXX has almost recovered, TVIX is still down $5 just in two days. So imagine if VXX continues to go down for a few days, very soon TVX will have zero value. Or let's say it has gone down 50% before you realize in snap of a finger, moment you wake up, you get, you know, you figure out what's going wrong, TVX is down. So don't inventory it. If you really want to take a bet and go all in, take a bet only for just one day. And really, if you look into the risk factors that they mention in TVIX, UVXY prospectus, it's, they clearly state, we don't recommend holding it beyond a day. So if you are a professional and you got all your data set up, you know that volatility is going to spike up, VXX is going to go up, maybe only then you should take a bet on these leveraged products. Otherwise, just stay away. All right, you think I'm trying to scare you? Let's look at some numbers. At this time, some real numbers, not my assumptions. So let's look at some leverage track. So UVXY, today it is $27. If we account for all the reverse splits that have happened on UVXY, in 2011, when it was launched, it would have been launched at, and if you're standing, just get some support. It would have been launched at $244,800,000. A product whose value is $244,800,000 is now only worth $27. That's what this leverage drag can do. This is what it has done to UVXY. So if you look in 
your trading platform, check for UVXY and select that you want to go back maximum period and want to look at the daily prices. And if your trading platform does adjust the charts to account for reverse splits, this is what you should see. If UVXY had not reverse split, it would have been trading in one thousandths of a penny. That's the reason why these leverage products, UVXY, TVIX, have to continuously reverse split. They have been reverse splitting for years. And if this wasn't enough, let's talk about TVIX. Now this time, I'll recommend you to be seated. TVIX was introduced in 2010. And if we account for all the reverse splits, the price at which it would have got introduced in 2010 would be, hold tight, take a deep breath, 2 billion means B, 2 billion, 808 million, 750 thousand dollars. And today, we are in June 2020, it is trading at 108 dollars. These products have lost 99.9999999, I, I don't think I have to go further down, percent of its value. Anyone who is thinking that, hey, we can buy UVXY, we can buy TVX and wait for volatility to pop up and make money. Ah, sorry, math is not with you. You need to understand how these products are structured before you invest. So next time if you hear someone saying, I'm taking positions in UVXY, don't just rush out to buy UVXY. Think what UVXY can do or it has done in past. Okay, So I would say if you're retail investors, stay away from these products. Now I want to address one more question is, hey, if it has got inherent drag built in it, if it is such a big wealth destroyer for retail investors, can I take an opposite position? Can I short it? I know it has got inherent drag built in it, so let me take a short position in it. And when it goes down, I'll close my position, make money. So if we can't buy it, can we short it? So just from that perspective, here's what I'll caution you. Because these are leverage products, if volatility or if VXX cooperates, move higher, these products are built in to move high at much rapid space. So if we look back in recent history, just between February 2020 and March 2020, when we had a health crisis, volatility go, went higher, VXS went up, TVIX jumped 2700 percent in just a few weeks. Now, if you were thinking to invest some amount of money, maybe 5%, maybe 2% of your portfolio and short it, you would have gone bankrupt. So don't get cute and try to short it because you don't know when the next burst of volatility might hit you. And don't buy it because you don't know when the next volatility burst will hit you and the drag will continue to go down. So if you are a retail investor, stay away from these products. Don't try to inventory it for a longer period. Don't try to short it for a longer period. You never know how long it might take or how soon the Volmageddon, the Volatility Armageddon could hit you and wipe out your portfolio. 
So stay away. If you are taking position in VIX or UVXY, if you're buying them for and trying to hold it for a week or two, just do it with the mindset that you're not going to recover any money because of the drag that is built in. If you go with that mindset, yeah, you can trade it. Just don't put 5% of a portfolio in it. Take a very small position. Okay. Once again, just to summarize, if you, as a retail investors, if you want to do anything with volatility products, your best options would be VIX for, if you want to take, you know, three months, four months positions, you can take positions in VIX options. Or if you want to do for a little shorter duration, maybe a month or maximum two months. Take positions in VXX. If you can monitor your positions and you have a very, 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 very strong opinion about how well it is going to perform, you can take ultra short duration positions in leverage products like UVXY, TVIX, SVXY. But my recommendation is stay away from them. All right. I hope uh, this helps you in deciding what you want to do with volatility as an asset, where you would like to take your positions and give you some understanding of what you're getting into rather than just trying to follow someone else. As always, if you have any questions, you can email it to me at optiongig at gmail.com or if you're watching this on YouTube channel, just pop in your questions in the comments. And if you want to continue, stay up to date on my thoughts about how retail investors can participate in stock market, you may want to subscribe to my YouTube channel or to the podcast so that I can get the latest episodes right over to you. Thank you very much for spending time and I'll talk to you again in next session. Goodbye. Happy trading. Please note that all the information presented is is purely for educational purposes and is not a financial or investment advice. I don't know you, you don't know me, so do yourself a favor and don't invest or trade solely based on what you hear.